Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. It is Thursday, the 26th day of May, 2022. It is the 40th day of Easter, um, and with the rest of the world, it is Ascension Thursday. Uh, but because some of our bishops in the United States thought that people would not go to Mass on a Thursday, I don't know why, because they go to Mass on Holy Thursday, uh, they decided to shift the celebration of the Ascension of the Lord to the Sunday that follows, which destroys the seventh Sunday of Easter and the dynamic of the Easter Sundays, and it creates a problem and a hole. Um, but be that as it may, our own bishop here in Raleigh, Louise did not have any role in this, so he's not to be blamed, uh, but he has to endure what other, other decisions that have been made have been made. Uh, so for us in the Diocese of Raleigh, as well as some other dioceses, most other dioceses around the United States, uh, today is Thursday of the sixth week of Easter, and so we will wait to celebrate the Ascension until Sunday. Um, so as it is, uh, we continue in our readings today to hear from the Acts of the Apostles. Oh, and so I'm in a car. I'm in a car because it's been a very busy uh, morning uh, with a bunch of things that had to be done, and now I have to be out on the road. Road and it is the afternoon, and so just doing this because I want to make sure that we want to make sure it gets done. Um, so in the first reading today, uh, Acts of the Apostles continues. Paul comes to a breaking point. He is in Corinth, uh, trying to again bring the gospel to another Jewish community there, and they revile him, make fun of him, you know, uh, tell me stupid and ridiculous and that all this is absurd. And he finally has that breaking point and he tears his garments or shakes them out or whatever it is and says, enough with you, I'm going to the Gentiles, you know, so there. Um, and that creates that sort of definitive break uh, that Paul ceases to really preach to the uh, Jewish people any longer and now just solely focuses upon the Gentiles. Again, is that God's plan? Not necessarily. Uh, again, this is where our own human weakness, unfortunately, comes into play. Was Paul always generous and charitable in his own preaching? We don't really know. He was always volatile. We know that. So maybe he wasn't always great. So his message may not have been always communicated in the proper way to his Jewish brothers and sisters. Be that as it may, it creates a break. Um, and one of the first breaks that will lead to others between the Christian movement and Judaism, uh, which then will just increase um, and the focus becomes uh, proclamation to the Gentiles solely. Um, so this is what happens. Again, the proclamation still continues. God is still able to work with this. But again, it shows us how God depends upon us in many ways to spread the word, through word, through actions, through who and what we are. And, you know, if we let our own personal agendas, our own personal faults and failings and abilities get in the way of what is possible in that proclamation with inside of us, then it may be deterred and it may go in a route we did not intend or expect. God can try to clean up the the the, um, uh, the the mistake maybe that we've made, but we still need to come back again to realizing maybe where we went too far afield and to correct our course so that everyone can hear uh, this proclamation of this good news, of what resurrection does, of how the resurrection of Christ changes world history um, and the future and, and destiny of us as human beings. Um, with that, you know, is, is John's continued uh, discourse, his continued narrative at the Last Supper, um, in which, uh, which in some ways is, again, something that we need to hear as we continue to experience the after effects of the shooting at Rob Elementary School in uh, Texas. Um, again, the sense in which uh, the uh, the foreshadowing of his resurrect of his death and his resurrection is given to the apostles and they don't understand it they don't know what it means uh, but Jesus says you will grieve and you will mourn but that will turn then into joy and how the world and while you grieve and mourn the world may rejoice but then they will not rejoice because what you have grieved will be turned into joy Again, it is something for us to remember always, that God turns despair into hope, turns death into life, turns darkness into light, turns sorrow into joy. This is what God's whole uh, pursuit is, is what God's whole perspective is about. Um, and that we have got to be instruments about that. We have got to be instruments that contribute to that. Um, it may seem very difficult to speak in some terms at this moment, especially to those whose lives were directly affected by what happened in Texas, but the reality is always the same. We must move from darkness to light from death to life, from sorrow to joy, from despair to hope. If we don't, you know, then the world rejoices in its own faults and its failings, in its own short-sightedness, in its own pains, in its own agonies over us. And the world cannot get ever the upper hand in that. The world can never ever be the one uh, that determines what we are to believe and what we are to think as human beings. It is God who determines this. And we become instruments in helping that determination to take flesh and to live and be light in this world. 
is what Easter again calls us to, and is to what we need to respond as a people who take seriously uh, Christ's resurrection and the purpose and the uh, consequences and the conclusions of that resurrection in our life. A blessed Easter continues for you, St. Francis and people of God. May the Lord give you his peace.